Good evening. You're listening to Loscombe's Choice on Resonance 104.4 FM. The evening show is the first in a brief series on independent record labels. The label featured this evening is America's Sunday's record label, which specializes in high-quality, nay, audiophile repressings of classic albums. Um, Their general manager, Tim Livingston, was kind enough to give me a brief interview, um, and this is what he had to say about the label. If you could just give um, a brief history of the company, um, its it's driving concept, because I I suppose you're very unlike other other record labels. Oh, absolutely. Um, All started 20 years ago, um, 89. Bob Irwin, um, who's the the owner of the company, um, was working in in record retail and really saw... um, I was doing some research for Rhino originally, um, picking up master tapes and whatnot. And at that point, um, they sort of had some things going, had a couple of hits with the Monkees and Billy Bear and stuff. And um, Bob's, they weren't interested in some of the other more obscure things that Bob was digging up, uh, Knickerbockers, Five Americans, whatnot. Hmm. So he kind of saw an opening, um, you know, a niche for this market of just quality reissues. Started the company right out of his house, um, him and his wife, and since then it has grown about 20 years later um, mm. into what we believe to be the most formidable reissue record label on the planet right now. Um, but uh, Bob, besides uh, running Sundays, has done a lot of work as far as uh, mastering goes for um, and producing Sony Music, uh, BMG. He's done the complete uh, Simon and Garfunkel catalog, uh, Steve Ray Vaughan, Jefferson Airplane, The Birds for them along with all the, the reissues we do here on both mm. vinyl and CD. But, um, yeah, we've been going at it for 20 years now uh, with no end in sight. We have a great release schedule coming up this year, and just keep going at it. Excellent. So it's very much um, a label born of sort of passion passion for music and, and audio quality. Yeah, that's definitely all about the music. I mean, Bob's been a player his whole life. Everybody here is really in the music. Um, they either play or just are, you know, record collectors and uh we really just try to present stuff. Um, don't try to rewrite history, present it the way it came out originally. Um, go all out as far as, you know, liner notes, artwork, everything we possibly can do, and, of course, the sound. Bob's just very meticulous about making it sound as, as perfect and as, uh, as great as it did when it was originally released back in the day. Mm, no, no, I mean, I know I've, I've, got, a, I've got a few um, of your releases. Um, I recently got um, Riot Going On by Sly Stone. Um, put out by you guys, and it sounds absolutely amazing on the headphones. So, um, Appreciate that. Could you just um, describe the process um, of producing a 180-gram uh, vinyl product? Well, everything's done in-house here other than the actual pressing. Um, all, all the artwork is done here, whether it's an original project or an exact repro, such as in, in the Sly cases where exact repros of those albums. Our art department does that. Um, Bob is, is usually the guy who comes up with the ideas or, you know, things we want to do. It all, all kind of fits into some sort of cool niche that we have going here, um, mm. being garage or surf or psychedelic or soul, um, primarily the 60s. Um, he does all the work in the studios, um, obtaining the original master tapes, um, mastering them, you know, just to sound great on CD or, or vinyl today. And it's all, you know, it's done in our studios here. We have three mastering rooms here um, in our offices, uh, complete art department, all the marketing, sales, publicity is done out of here. Again, the only thing that's not done is, you know, the actual cutting of the lacquers and the, the pressings, which are done at one of our plants. Okay, superb. And um, what are the advantages, um, would you say, of 180-gram um, vinyl? Well, the, the thicker the vinyl, um, you know, in theory, uh, the, the deeper the groove can be cut, just a, a little more, you know, as far as sound goes, a little more stable. Okay, and, um, you know, I mean, you know, vinyl is a very... Sorry, I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. Oh, no, but vinyl, vinyl is a very physical um, medium. Um, how would you how would you say? Um, I mean, th- there are some people that believe um, it a superior um, medium to CD. I mean, you know, from a, from a technical point of view, um, would you say there's any truth to that? Um, I believe so. We, we we love vinyl. We think it's warmer sounding, the nice warm analog sound. There's great sounding CDs out there. There's poor sounding CDs. There's great sounding vinyl. There's poor sounding mm. vinyl. Um, when done right, um, again, this has a warmth and a feel to it like no other. And as you said, like being a physical thing, it, there's definitely the um, interactive part of it, too, where it's almost like a, a ritual thing, the record, flipping it over. It's just, you know, just much more interactive as far as being hands-on and nothing like an album cover, too, as far as artwork goes. Mm, I completely agree. 
Um, also, I mean, you know, you've um, you've had a, a great degree of success um, and you know a lot of um, critical accolades. Um, do you still think of yourself um, as a niche market per se? Well, it's growing all the time. You know, we, we every year we grow and um, become uh, more successful and uh, sales wise and whatnot. Um, more people know about us and, and what we're doing. Um, you know, in, in, in a certain sense, it is. But it, it, you know, especially the last three years, four years, vinyl sales have just gone through the roof. They're really climbing. It's it's no longer an audio file only type thing. It's you know, a lot of young kids are getting into it. Again, a lot of it, I think, is with the hands-on thing and just the, kind of the cool factor of it all. Mm. Um, so we're, we're always looking to, to grow and expand and, and get things out there. We're still fiercely independent. Mm. Um, you know, we, we do everything right now here, like I mentioned before, and uh, we just love what we do and can, want to continue to do it. Superb. And, I mean, I, I think that kind of answers my next question, but um, I'll ask it anyway. Um, were, were you surprised um, by the success um, of your vinyl products, you know, particularly in an ever, ever sort of increasingly uh, digital age where, you know, particularly the, the sort of younger buying generation have been brought up on, on computers and I, um, iPods and so forth? I don't know if I'm necessarily surprised. We, we've always done it. We've done vinyl since day one, and we've always stayed true to it. Um, kind of saw it coming, you know, a few years back before everybody else started jumping on it and we started increasing our, our vinyl output. We started a, uh, a subsidy label called Beat Rocket Records, which was a kind of obscure garage things. Um, our Euphoria Jazz label, where we started doing some jazz vinyl pressings on. And um, we've always just tried to stay a little bit ahead of, ahead of the curve on everybody and um, never have a lack of ideas and things to come out with. And I don't think in our lifetimes we ever will. Mm. Um so, yeah, you know, we kind of forecasted it a bit, and um, we just kind of rode with it as it did grow. I'm very happy that it grew. I don't know about necessarily surprised, but it, it was it was nice to see it, you know, grow along with us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I I, I still um, you know listen and and listen to and buy vinyl in spite of the fact that a lot of my music's on my laptop. But um, I was going to say, um, how much uh, you were saying, you know, that everybody at the company is very much into music. Um, mm -hmm. How much of um, the label's output is driven by the taste of the people that work there, and how much is defined by uh, market research, etc.? I would say the majority of it is defined by the, the taste of the, of the people here. Although, you know, we do take into consideration, especially when, when licensing projects, if there's a guarantee involved or whatever, you know, the sales potential of it. You know, we can't do everything we, we want to do, but um, but we do do a lot of... We'll go out on the limb and do things like a four-CD Trashman box set. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, well, I mean, I, 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 I'd buy it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and um, do do any of the artists um, whose albums you republish um, have any involvement uh, with the products? We, we try to involve the, the artists whenever we can and whenever they want to be, absolutely, especially when we're you know, licensing directly from the band um, or, or artists, yeah. You know, it's like we, we always offer that up to them to be involved in some extent, whether they want to help, help with the project, you know, interviews, uh, memorabilia, or uh, just, you know, sort of see the progress of it and everything, but... Absolutely, and I've been very fortunate to deal with some incredible people over the years in that respect. Uh, could, could you give us a, an example, uh, right. if, you, if you could choose? Bert, um, great friend of ours, mm. Donovan. Um, oh, Donovan, oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. really goes on and on, um, but it's just been, uh, it's, it's been a great... Uh, Great ride. <laughs> no, that's amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Donovan fan as well. I mean, do, do, would you say the artists um, are, are very much pleased to have their um, their, their, their catalog sort of faithfully uh, recreated? Um, you know, both artistically and um, sonically, if you like. I, I think so. Uh, yeah, absolutely. They, you know, they, you know, we we try to do them justice in their legacy and, and make it sound and feel the way that they they want it to. Uh, Van Dyke's Parks is another person who came to us, just you know, really happy that we did his albums, just the way he originally intended them to be, without you know messing with it at all and mm. things along that lines. But uh, yeah, uh, you know, we've uh, our success rate, and it seems like everybody's very pleased with what we do, and that makes us happy. That was Tim Livingston of Sunday's Records. And now to hear some of that rather fantastic output, uh, we will begin with a personal favourite of mine, released on Elektra in 1970. This is the Stooges' second album, Funhouse. And the track we will hear is Funhouse. Mm -hmm. 